Ah, you know it's the start of the season, listeners, when the preview shows start coming thick and fast. Because this weekend, the Horseland Wandon Park International Horse Event over in Australia. And we have done the preview and review show for for Wandon for the last couple of years. It is always so much fun to get a real insight into what is going on and who are our ones to watch. There's a few that we could well see um, feature a lot over the coming months as well. So watch this space. The lovely Sharon Ridgway, the the kind of the um, font of all things eventing knowledge, but particularly Australian eventing knowledge. Sharon, how are you? I'm very good, Nicole, and thanks for having me. It's always fun joining in with the podcast. I'm so jealous because we were just comparing notes, listeners. I was just delighted that we didn't have any rain in the UK today. But Sharon was um, saying how hot it was and was being overrun by bugs. Uh, It's evening your time, but it's like 27 degrees. 27 degrees at nine o'clock at night. And so my choice was leave the door open and get swooped by bugs or close the door and be sitting in a greenhouse because I'm I'm in an outside cubby house to, so my naughty dogs don't bark while we're looking. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, look, we appreciate it. We're looking forward to this. There's some really smart horses in the lineup. Um, first of all, let's start with Wandin Park. Um, for anybody who hasn't been or hasn't listened to a, a, a previous preview show or anything like that, Just give us an insight. Where is it and what is the event like? Wandon Park, oh, it's such an iconic event here in Australia. It's up in the beautiful wine region of the Yarrow Valley. So picture beautiful big rolling hills with hot air balloons floating over them and all these beautiful uh, vineyards everywhere. It's been running for over 40 years now. So uh, I think one of the early course designers was Captain Mark Phillips. So it's got a fantastic cross-country track that's it the terrain's tough you know it's very undulating it's uh a bit like if we were likening it to a british event it's a little bit like gatcom or barbary one of those events that you can sit on the side of the hill fantastic viewing event you can see i would say three quarters of the course from sitting in one spot um but terrain wise it's a tough one on the horses they've got to be fit you know they've got to be it's actually a super one at this time of the season just to get a bit of an idea where the horse's fitness is because some of these horses remember will be heading into Adelaide in four weeks time so you know Adelaide comes quite early in the season so a run up and down the Wandon Hills is certainly one way to gauge how fit your horse is. Feels like a bit of a pre burley Gatcombe run that we've seen yeah. previously. Um, interestingly, listeners, cross-country time tends to n- not be that achievable. Um, so only four of the last, uh, four of the last probably 16 winners have made the time cross-country. Everybody else has added time penalties to their uh, total score. So it is, it is a tough one to make the time on we're going to start let's start with that the top of the market so to speak because Sophia Hill has humble glory Sophia Hill now she was Sophia Landy um and she's had a busy last uh six months or so Sophia had a little baby in October last year so she's a new mum but jumped straight back on and you know is straight back in her groove uh humble glory oh he's such a classic Sarah Braid, you know, beautiful galloper, fantastic jumper. Um, of course, his top performance was coming third at Adelaide in the five star last year behind the evergreen, beautiful Virgil. Um, and Sophia's recently actually had her first senior call up at the Oceana Championships at the Horse of the Year show in New Zealand. So that was her first senior Australian team rep, which was very exciting for Sophia. Would you believe, though, she had a, a silly 20 penalties, just a steering drive by of a skinny that was part C through a water complex. And that's actually the first ever 20 penalties, beautiful, humble glories ever had so you know he is a cross-country machine she blames herself a little bit she said her reins got a little bit long jumping into the water and she sort of steered to be on a nice mary king end of the rain job and by the time she got to sea she just didn't have any steering and he he didn't even clock onto it so i don't think we can um blame humble glory for that i'm sure he wouldn't take any ill effects away from it but as sophia said it's probably sharpened her up a little so 
He was the only one to make the time 12 months ago um, when he yeah. won. He finished on his dressage score of 34.3 to take the win ahead of David Middleton, WEC in the money. Uh, we'll talk about David in a moment. Um, Sam Jeffrey, who again is in the field here this year, uh, was the other rider on the podium. But has form. Um, for me, it's his cross-country prowess that stands out here. You know, he isn't necessarily going to be leading the first phase but he is so quick, Sharon. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping, and you might have done some digging on this because we were talking about it, that he might be coming over to European soil later this year. He is. That's very exciting. So Sophia's plans at the moment are to run competitively this weekend at Wandon. So, you know, she needs to get some really good solid uh, four shorts under her belt at the moment and finishing on her dressage score, which she's more than capable of. He's an exceptionally good show jumper. She often is seen out at pure show jump shows, jumping metre 30s and metre 40s. And, you know, um, so she is planning to run competitively here at Wandon, then head to Adelaide, just the four star short, just to have another little top up run before jumping on a plane, which is really exciting. And certainly uh, with Humble Glory, and, and she's just hoping too that maybe she might be able to take a couple of her other teams. She's got a couple of lovely three star horses, but that's all a little bit uh, funds dependent. But if she can, she'd love to take a couple of other horses over with her as well. Um, and then plans are at this stage. Obviously, Paris is the, the main goal, but she would absolutely love to maybe have a go at something like Arkin. And then if she doesn't get selected for Paris, I think if there was ever a burly horse, Humble Glory has got that written all over him. Do you know what? I'd love to, not that I don't want to see her in Paris, obviously, but I'd love to see him go at Burley because it feels like a track that would be just up his street. Lots of galloping. He's so blood. Um, I have to say, massive shout out to Sophia. She obviously had a slightly quieter finish the season. She stopped actually competing in internationally in the beginning of June last That's year. That's right. right. Yeah. But from 14 international starts to the beginning of middle of June, she had eight wins, listeners. Yeah. I yeah. mean, she was he's, on he's an FOB fire. specialist. This was across her string. So a number of yeah. those came yeah. with humble glory, but eight wins. I'm just going to say, so the rider that had the most international wins last season was Caroline Pamucci. And I'm just going to double check because I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was 11, 13, something like that. Um, so Sophia's not far behind. She, she would have been, she was right yeah. in the mix. Yeah, um, yeah. And like, having a baby is a great reason not to be <laughs> continuing the rest of your season. Exactly. Um, okay, so Humble Glory, the defending champion. David Middleton has a couple of rides. Uh, firstly, um, so I should say, Sophia has a 24% win chance on the Prediction yeah. Centre. David Middleton, hot on her heels. WEC in the breeze in second on the Prediction Centre. Just 1% behind, so neck and neck, very little yeah. between. So. Dave's got three horses entered. He's got In the Breeze, In he the Money, and In the Ditch. Yeah, he's got WEC In the Ditch entered as well I, when I glanced at the start list. Um, so In the Money is his more experienced one. Um, he, I think, was second last year at Wandon, so he's got form on the course. Uh, he's certainly, the, he's the 12-year-old one, and they're all homebred. They're all by Dave Stallion, WEC, in the black, which I just find that so amazing that somebody could breed three horses that are all at four-star level and, you know, homebreds and home-produced. So, you know, it's a huge credit to Dave that he can keep producing these lovely homebred horses in the money had a couple of blitz last season so I, I would be picking in the breeze over in the money this weekend but having said that they both performed really well at ton and back two weekends ago in the breeze one and in the money was second so you know he, he's well up there with a very good chance in the breeze is a mare not a gelding and she's a year younger um and she is a really phenomenal jumper. I mean, they're both super duper show jumpers. They both go out and jump meter forties, meter thirties against all the pure jumpers quite confidently and very successfully, I may add. But in the breeze, as if if you've never watched her jump, she's definitely worth um, jumping onto the Wandon Facebook live stream and watching the breeze jump. She is 
I think I have to use the word a bit of a freak. She's just got <laughs> a really amazing, unusual technique where she snaps up really quickly, but then she unfolds her legs in the most extravagant way on the way down. And if you Google Dave Middleton and WEC in the bridge, you'll probably find some still photos online of the mayor doing things that are quite amazing. So, um, yeah, so both of those, I would say, are going to be in with a, a decent shot. Dave knows how to go quick around Wandon. They wouldn't be as much blood, obviously, as Sophia's horse. But, you know, he's certainly good. he's jumped around that Wandon track many, many times, has Dave. His his third horse, WC in the ditch, I would say would be incredibly green at this level. It's only an eight year old. And funnily enough, it was in the two star last year. So it's made a meteoric rise to four star. It's the first four-star run for the horse. I have to yeah. say, only a nine-year-old um, was second at Tonnenbach in the three-star last time out, second in, the, in a three-star long, actually, last year as well. Um, but I would say I'm fascinated by the name in the ditch. You feel like there's a story there, don't you? I, yeah, I don't know the story, but I bet you the mayor fell down and it slithered into some drain down uh, where Dave lives down in Warragul. I don't know. I'll get to, I'll report back. I'll do some homework on that one. Brilliant. We'll look forward to finding out. The The next person I'm going to go to is a two-time winner of Wandin, the lovely Sam Jeffrey. We actually had Sophia Hill on the show last year. I'm pretty certain we had Sam Jeffrey. We did, yeah. Before. And he we did. did. Really, really lovely lad and, and has got a really smart team of horses. 14% win chance for him. Cuyona Tactician, the horse okay. kind of leads... Now, the Cahuna Tactician, he is an enormous, incredibly tall, sort of 71, 72 grey horse. Uh, he's the one that we chatted about last year, and he's the grandson of Brilliant Invader. So a lot of those Cahuna horses have got exceptionally good eventing and jumping blood. Sam is heading to Five Star Adelaide with him, which is really exciting. Um interestingly, when I chatted to Sam, I said, Oh, how many are you going to ride at Adelaide? And he said, Do you know what? I've been chatting to all my mentors and coaches and I'm just going to take Tactician, whose nickname's Tom, because he's so completely different to all his other horses that he could take a couple more horses and run them in their four short or he's probably got a three long horse he could take. But he said every time he tries to mix and match them, he ends up not riding tactician in the way that he needs to ride him because he's a much colder horse he needs to get on him and be really positive and get going forward and he said he just ends up having too many time penalties because tom's really easy and you know he doesn't pull and he gets off these really feisty ones which the rest of his team at the moment are quite a fiery lot and he said he just you know he chatted to his coaches and his mentors and and they just said you know what you'll give the five star a much better go if you just get into your tom headspace so that's what he's going to do which i think is very it, mature and smart very mature very smart and it's interesting actually because looking at his record he's he's very consistent um reliable cross country i think has only really had one blip um in a long long time going back to 2018 and that actually came here at wandin last year when he would have been amongst the favorites um yeah. because he was second in 2022 here so he has course form um was placed in the the one star as it was then two star as it is now a few years ago as well but the speed cross country is very much the thing exactly. that actually is where it costs him because he can be low enough in the first phase. He'll be early thirties. Yeah. Um, a very he good job. Well, he, he could well lead the dressage between him and EA Berlin uh, and Lily Wickenden. They are the two that I would say will possibly be leading after the first phase. But yeah, I mean, Tom should go fast. He's enormous. He's got a huge, big stride. He's really scopy. He is a big jumper. So he probably spends a bit of time in the air and that is always hard. But I think too, just that, you know, getting into that big scopy galloping rhythm he he should i guess it's a bit hilly and a bit twisty um but courses like tonham back two weekends ago are probably a, a tougher track for him to go fast around because there's a lot of uh, ducking in and out of the trees at least with wandon you can get rolling down the hills and zooming up the other side and i think if there's a course that he can go a bit faster it will certainly be uh, one like wandon 
It's, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them actually at Adelaide and, and this weekend. Sam is a really, really talented jockey and he's got some very smart horses coming through. So Coyona Tactician in there for him. Interestingly, everybody at the top of the market that we've just picked up on, um, Sophia Hill, David Middleton, Sam Jeffrey, they were all sat on very, very good show jumpers. They so are. It's exactly. Like, you yeah. know, you're going to yeah. be looking at the first phase influence and then, of course, that speed cross country. Next on the Prediction Centre, Molly Lyons, Tadpole, 10% win chance. You know, he's a really interesting one. He's There's three thoroughbreds in the field. Um, Humble Glory, obviously one of them, and Tadpole is another. And Molly has just actually come back from the Oceana, where she was the best-placed Australian young rider. So at Oceana, they have a senior team around a four-short, and they have a young rider team around a three-star. And she was the best-placed Australian. She came third... Uh, in the Oceana and the Australian team won the senior championships but the Kiwis picked us in the young rider but Molly was had two Kiwis above her but she was the best placed Australian she was second in the three star at Wandon last year so she's definitely got course form we've talked before about how important it is to be quick at Wandon and to be sitting on a horse with a bit of blood and he's a gorgeous gorgeous little thoroughbred that she basically bought from a show jumping yard and has produced herself and she's only I think 20 Molly so you know pretty she's fairly new to four star level but he's a very genuine point and shoot brave little thoroughbred horse so I think she she only stepped up to four star last season um but I think he's he's could be quite competitive I would certainly be looking at him as being one of the ones that's up in the top four or five at the end of the competition. To put it into context in terms of the cross-country time, how many people have made the cross-country time? Going back to 2008, listeners, um, you have got one, two, three, four, five people have made the time at Wandon. Going back to And I know for a fact at least half of them are thoroughbred because it was Popping Candy. And yeah, Coco Popping Candy, Amanda yeah. Ross. Yeah, yeah. What was so, she called? What did everybody call her? Uh, Z- Zara was a pet name, but uh, I think there was some trick with her where her popping was spelt wrong on the FEI database. Oh, and it okay. might have said pooping candy, but oh, okay. her name. <laughs> Megan Jones, Tulando, actually a really interesting one here. Very unfortunately for Megan, he was heading to Poe to the five star which makes me think he's probably doing Wandon as a run leading into the five star at Adelaide. That would make sense. But for poor Megan, he had a trailer accident literally 10 days out from Poe and was basically tipped upside down and caught in a trailer. And I think did a bit of a laceration or a gash that stopped him from being able to go to pose. So that was incredibly unlucky. Um, But I think he'll be using this as a prep run, I would say, leading into Adelaide. He's not the fastest horse in the world. I think Megan's pet name for him is he's a land whale because he's a little bit like a a whale out of water. You and me both. (laughs) (laughs) So he, I would imagine he wouldn't be the quickest around Wandon, but I'd say I think he didn't complete last year at Wandon. So I think she'll be happy just to, if he's, he's a year more experienced and a year stronger. He's got an overseas trip under his belt. So I would say she'll be using that as a Adelaide prep run. Interestingly, actually, um, when he came over to Europe last year, she she did a lot of Nations Cup events with him, a lot of European events with him, Stragom, Avanche. She went over to Liniere in there as well. She didn't do Stragom, sorry. She did Jardy, Avanche, um, Liniere. So th- there were some really good different courses. He was top 10 at Adelaide in the four-star short as well. Who else have we got? Andy Danes, Hattrick. What can you tell us about them? Hattrick. Well, Andy Danes is famous here in Australia for being so stylish at the trot up. He always has the absolute best outfits. But Hattrick is another, he's the third thoroughbred in the field, a a little grey, very athletic, good little jumper. Um, He was fourth recently in the three star at Sydney. So Uh, And he did win a four short, I think, at Canberra last year. So he's got a little bit of four-star form. 
Um, it can be a little bit off the pace in the dressage, but he's a very good jumper, nice and athletic. And again, I think this track at Wondon often favours the thoroughbreds. So Andy's actually a New Zealander, but he's been living in Australia for quite a few years. Um, and he's a very capable rider, lovely athletic, grey thoroughbred horse. And I don't, he's not going to be on my podium, but I think he'll give it a great shot. Kiralee Hosier and AEA Flynn are the other ones that I wanted to pick up on. They were top 10 at Adelaide last year where things didn't go to plan for them in the jumping on the final day, uh, which was really frustrating because actually very good, generally speaking, cross country. Um, There's a couple of blips on their record over the last couple of years, but actually they've had a, a huge amount of success, particularly in the lower levels. And they've come all the way up through the grades together as well. Which is lovely, isn't it? And I would say she will be heading to maybe to Adelaide again. Um, you know, she did get round last year, clear round Adelaide. She just, and that was quite unusual for him to have, I think he had four rails, didn't he? Which is, you know, normally he's quite a quite a neat jumper. So I would say he's an, he's an older horse now, probably 16-ish or 17. I, I would say she will be heading to Adelaide. If she made it round last year, why wouldn't you go back and, try and do even better this year so I'd say this will be a prep run for her um he's capable of doing quite a neat neat low 30s sort of test so another one I would say doing a prep run but this one I would say would be five star bound. Lily Wickenden you've already mentioned with the EA Berlin that sort of among your two to lead the dressage um the only one in the field actually that has been sub 30 in in recent runs in the last sort of 12 months or so for me, I think it's the cross country that that we'll all be watching out for. Has had a few blips in recent. Yeah, he's he's relatively new to the four star level, and I would think he'd be the first horse Lily's had at that level. So she's got two absolutely beautiful horses. She's got another one running in the three star as well. She's actually a local girl. Lives sort of ten minutes down the road from me. She's very stylish. She's very good on the flat, and um, she's very dedicated and and working really hard and improving and training all the time um and i think really it's just experience for her you know she hasn't got a, a whole heap of four star experience so she's sort of learning on the job who else have we got in the field samantha sesnick is one um that's actually a graffenstolz interestingly enough so <laughs> uh yeah so there's not terribly many of them in australia um and Graf-tango. Yeah, Graf Tango. So um, she's a mayor. She is prone to being a bit hit and miss in the dress size. She's a good, solid cross-country horse. Um, Sam was incredibly unlucky in – she. I think she was placed relatively highly at Sydney Long last year, four-star long, and she went the wrong way in the show jumping, which <gasps> must be just heartbreaking, you know, because I'm sure she needed that qualifier. Um, whether she's heading to Adelaide or not, I don't know. I know Sam and her partner are planning on moving to the UK at the end of the year, so you might get to see oh, a, little bit, a little bit more of them. But um, Graf Tango, it's not on my podium because it won't do a good enough test and it's prone to having a couple of rails down, but I can see it jumping around the cross country absolutely fine. It's a brave, uh, grumpy, ears back sort of mare that just kind of goes at it and jumps everything in her path. Last one to mention, Penelope Johnson and BB Boom in the field. Um, I think he's 19 now, which is pretty amazing that he's still going around and giving these four-star events a bit of a crack. Um, Penelope's got a whole team of horses. She's got a lot of younger ones coming up behind him. Um, He can be a little bit inconsistent. He does often uh, have the odd stop here and there. But, you know, uh, he looks fit and healthy and well and good honour for getting out there and having a go. Sharon, podium time. Always a fun challenge. Um, I properly, so I was really out of practice. When I went to do my podium for Carolina International last week, I was so out of practice. I put myself on the spot. I knew I was going to ask the question and I was paddling around. So I'm going to, I'm going to be more assured this time. I would Um, like to point out your eventing manager team was pretty good. I I feel like I might retire while I'm ahead. (laughs) You know what I was impressed about? Your podium picks where was your eventing manager team, so you absolutely put your money where your yeah, mouth is. And I did, it got you a cracking result. I did, I was happy enough with that. I, um, Carolina, I ended up 
in the top 30, which for me and eventing manager listeners, let me tell you, is is quite some success um, because I wouldn't have the best track record. My form would be very patchy. But yeah, my team, Will Forgery. Yeah. Uh, who else do I have? Liz Halliday. And um, did you have Caroline? I didn't have Caroline. I'm a big Caroline fan, so I'm kicking myself. Mm. I should have done. I should have done a little bit what could have been listeners. Um, mm. But what I'm trying to say is I'm going to be really committed here. So Excellent. my win goes to Sophia Hill, Humble Glory. I think they will uh, be a little bit off the pace after the dressage, but he's a good jumper. And I think she will speed around the cross country. But I also think there's a, there's a lot to be said for kind of putting Land Rover Horse of the Year behind her. Onwards to Adelaide. There's lots of options coming up over the next few months. Then I'm going to say in second, Sam Jeffrey, Cuyona Tactician. I think he'll he'll jump a double clear and we'll be able to, time penalties will cost him, but I think he might use it as a good fast fitness run for Adelaide. Um, and third, I'm going to go with David Middleton, WEC in the breeze. Well, you have just stolen my thunder. <laughs> and I know that you, I'm not allowed to wave my pieces of paper around, but my piece of paper there will show you I had exactly the same person. She actually, <laughs> listeners, for the purposes of clarity, she has got the exact same podium written down. Sharon, so I'm very I've impressed got, with the organisation, to be honest, because I've I... I've got Sophia down uh, as close to an FOD as she can, I've got yep. Sam down leading the dressage and adding only single figure time penalties. And I've got Dave and in the breeze a little bit further off the pace in the dressage, double clear with just a handful of time. But Sam will still squeak just ahead of Dave. Ah, there you go, listeners. Top three at the Horse and Wonder International Horse Trust. Um, Sharon, before we go any further, um, and obviously everybody, I hope can tune in this weekend it is free on the youtube channel and the facebook channel i believe as well so go and watch and you'll be able to enjoy the brilliant brilliant wine country cross country that's going to be a real challenge you'll be able to watch it back if you're on an unfavorable time zone as well you can watch it back but i feel like we can't have an australian focused podcast without sending our very 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 best wishes to shane rose for a speedy recovery absolutely poor shane that was a Pretty nasty tumble by all accounts, and he's had uh, one lot of surgery, and I think possibly has some more to go. But if anybody can get back upright and going uh, with Paris looming four months away, it'll be our Shane because he is one tough cookie. And if ever you needed a reason to get better quickly, he's got a fantastic one. And Virgil's all qualified, ready to go. Literally, if there was ever a horse you could just jump on the week before and go, presumably if he's been kept ticking over, um, yes. their, their partnership is so special. You know, they know each other so incredibly well. Um, I think Shane could just jump on and get going. We just need him to get better soon. We need you. Fingers crossed, Shane. Everything, everything crossed for a speedy recovery. Um, we actually popped a graphic out um, from Echo Ratings just before the news broke of Shane's fall that actually Virgil is the most decorated horse in terms of international wins in Australia in the last 16 years. He has 16 international victories, backed up, of course, with that brilliant win at Land Rover Horse of the Year a few weeks ago over in New Zealand. Um, he has possibly got more stamps on his passport than most other people to be honest as well he's had an extraordinary career um and really deserves to be celebrated but Shane fingers crossed speedy recovery take care of yourself and if anybody can do it we firmly believe you can do it because you are like the bionic man um Sharon enjoy Wandin this weekend and I'm looking forward to debriefing next week fantastic and the weather looks a little bit cooler it's only going to be 21 or 22 which will be beautiful eventing weather it sounds idyllic, to be honest. We're all still <laughs> slopping around in the mud. So I am very jealous, if I'm honest. Um, but enjoy it. And if you aren't in Australia and you want to tune in, don't forget you can watch that uh, stream on YouTube. It is free to watch or on Facebook. Make sure you always, and I'm going to say this now, listeners, we'll say it throughout the year as well, I'm sure, but always make sure that you press the appropriate link. And if somebody asks you for money and it doesn't look appropriate, don't be clicking that link. Make sure you go through the official channels to go to the appropriate link for the live stream because there's lots of lots of strange hackers out there on social media these days. Um, and just be sensible. 
there we go there's my little bit of parenting advice for the podcast um sharon a pleasure as always thank you for doing this so late your time and uh, we will be back very soon listeners with the wandin park review show but enjoy it this weekend thanks nicole decorating core sales uh first of all sam introduces what is going on we have oh from the first day we started echo ratings because of because of moneyball you know one of the things that inspired us to to bring analytics into equestrian sports it was all about sourcing talent you know it's it's like none of us have a crystal ball as to as to who's going to be the superstar of the future so how can we make a calculated decision how can we actually like that human efficiency piece like the limitations of humans versus like what are machines better at than humans and one is you know, looking at a vast amount of potential assets that you could buy and, and finding what ticks the box. Um, so look, from from the first day we start with Echo Ratings, horse sales was always something that Echo Ratings could one day do. But we obviously had lots of things to do. We're doing risk, high performance, content, working with brands, lots of stuff. But with the build up to Paris 2024, and actually there's been loads of other searches, there's been junior horses for championships and stuff like that. We've already had quite a lot of clients on the go. People basically banging the door down saying, look, guys, help us find this horse. Um, and that's led to us now building a team. We have, we have full-time people dedicated to this, really creating a process to source equine talent that is going to help you achieve your goal whether it's 2024 or it's 2026 or it's 2028, we're up and running. Hi, Sarah from Foreign Equine here. Do you compete your horse? If so, here are a couple of essential supplements that you should have on hand. Firstly, Prefuel, available as both a liquid and a handy gel syringe. It is designed to support energy and muscle function by providing energy in the form of glucose, branch chain amino acids and B vitamins. And secondly, refuel, again available as both a liquid and a gel, which is formulated to be given after competition or intense exercise to support recovery and rehydration. It contains a powerful combination of highly concentrated levels of essential electrolytes, which are lost through sweating, especially in warm weather, and B vitamins to stimulate appetite. Antioxidants are also included in the gel to further support recovery, meaning you can look forward to your next competition.